The engine block is a crucial component of an internal combustion engine. It serves as the foundation for various engine parts and provides structural support for the engine's operation. Early engine blocks consisted of just cylinder blocks, to which separate crankcase was attached. Modern engine blocks typically have the crankcase, integrated with the cylinder block as a single component. The engine block contains several cylinders arranged in a specific configuration based on the engine design. The number of cylinders can vary depending on the engine type. Common configurations include inline, V-shaped, and flat, or boxer. Parts of engine block The main part of engine block is a cylinder. It is the space in which a piston travels. Other parts are like water jacket, cylinder walls, deck surface, cylinder bore, water plugs, block mounts, crankshaft housing, and camshaft housing. Engine blocks are normally cast from either cast iron or an aluminum alloy. In this video, we are taking a look at difference between cast iron engine block and aluminum engine block. Let's start with cast iron engine block. Cast iron blocks are made from a metal alloy that is formed by melting iron. The molten metal is then poured into a mold and allowed to cool and solidify. The type of cast iron used in engine blocks is gray cast iron, which has a graphite microstructure that delivers its characteristic gray color. Gray cast iron is classified into different classes, classes 20 and 25 being the most popular for passenger car engine blocks, featuring a tensile strength of 20,000 to 25,000 psi. Cast iron engines have more heat retention capability. It can withstand higher pressures than its aluminum counterpart. They are more tensile and can better withstand negative effects of higher engine operating temperatures. Another advantage you'll find with an iron engine block is power. Due to its massive strength, the iron block can handle more power and boost than an aluminum one. Aluminum engine blocks are made from a metal alloy that is formed by melting aluminum. The molten metal is then poured into a mold and allowed to cool and solidify. Most aluminum engine blocks are made from three alloys, 319, A356, or A357. Their typical tensile strength is between 10,000 and 14,000 psi. Aluminum blocks are better heat conductors which gives them superior efficiency in terms of quicker cold start ignition and peak acceleration. Aluminum engine cylinder walls are often lined with cast iron for reinforcement against wear and tear. This provides aluminum engines with the benefit of lightweight design for better fuel economy, along with the necessary resistance against cylinder wall wear. Gray cast iron has been a predominant material for manufacturing cast iron engine blocks for many years. The first aluminum engine block was used in Wright Flyer 1 aircraft in 1903. At that time, iron blocks are weighed too much and didn't deliver enough power to let an aircraft take to the air. So, aluminum engine was built for the Flyer 1 aircraft that incorporated parts, such as the cylinder block. Due to initial difficulties in metalworking and its high price at the time, it took over 60 years for aluminum to become widely used in the auto industry. In 1961, Land Rover's mass-produced Buick 215 featured an eight-cylinder V8 engine made from aluminum. The lightness of the engine was a revelation and it became an instant hit with race car drivers. As development of mass production technique came along, making entire engine blocks became a more efficient and cost-effective method. The process integrated various components such as cylinders, oil passages, and main saddles for the crankshaft into a single unit, simplifying the manufacturing process. In the 1960s and 70s, aluminum engine blocks made an appearance in mass-produced passenger cars, holding approximately 1% of the market share for newly produced internal combustion engines during that period. Over time, this percentage increased, reaching almost one-third by the late 1990s. By 2000, aluminum engine blocks were present in about half of all newly manufactured internal combustion engines. Nowadays, they dominate the market, being present in more than two-thirds of all newly produced internal combustion engines, particularly in petrol engines, it's because those are significantly lighter.
Modern aluminum blocks are pretty strong, but a properly built iron block is even stronger and that strength offers some benefits that might be less obvious. For example, if you have a catastrophic engine failure, an iron block is usually going to hold up better to it than aluminum block. The rigidity and higher tensile strength of iron makes it inherently better at handling large amounts of power and large amounts of boost than aluminum is. When you start really throwing a lot of boost or a lot of nitrous at it, the whole block can actually twist and move, and that can subsequently lead to other components failing, because they don't have the support they need at that instant. That's one scenario where an iron block is generally going to allow components to live longer and provide better reliability. If you were to do a direct comparison with all other variables being the same, you're typically going to see a little more horsepower from an iron block engine than you would with an equivalent aluminum block. Yes, iron blocks can handle more power, but well-built modern aluminum blocks can be pretty stout as well. So much of it comes down to the tune. Some guys will break blocks at 1,800 horsepower, while others make 3,500 horsepower and have 700 passes on a block. There's also a common misconception that aluminum blocks lose a significant amount of horsepower versus an iron block engine, because the material isn't as rigid, and the engine moves around. But ring packages, ring materials, and the technology used to finish the cylinders has come a long way over the years. The difference between iron blocks and aluminum blocks is as little as 10 horsepower in these kinds of applications. Focusing on weight, Aluminum engine blocks are about 30 to 40% lighter than cast iron because aluminum has lower density. This reduced weight allows for better weight distribution, improved fuel efficiency, and overall vehicle performance. Cast iron is denser and heavier than aluminum, offers robust durability and strength in engine blocks. The weight of a cast iron block can contribute to a heavier overall vehicle weight, potentially impacting fuel efficiency and handling. More importantly, iron block can withstand multiple sorts of deformation and delivers a longer lifespan, making it possible to better absorb noise and vibration than aluminum blocks. Cost is a big factor. Of course, you're reducing the cost of the block by about 40% or more by opting for iron over aluminum. And that's cast aluminum. A billet aluminum block would be an entirely different animal, where we're talking about multiples of price. When it comes to repairing, it's much harder to repair an iron block than an aluminum one. Indeed, the iron block costs less. But when components of the iron engine block need repairing, it can cost you as much as a new block. It's easier to replace an iron block than it is to repair it. In aluminum block, when you've reached the maximum bore at the end of the life cycle of the engine, you can replace the sleeves and start over with an aluminum block. With an iron block you can sleeve one or two cylinders, but if you need to sleeve the entire block, it's usually better to simply replace it. The sleeving process is more labor-intensive with an iron block, and between parts and labor, the cost savings usually isn't worth the trouble. Whether you prefer an iron or aluminum engine block, both have some advantages and disadvantages worth considering. The choice between a cast iron and aluminum engine block will depend on the type of vehicle and the performance requirements. For example, a high-performance car may require an aluminum engine block to reduce weight and improve performance, while a heavy-duty truck may require a cast iron engine block for its strength and durability. Ultimately, the decision of which type of engine block to use will be made by the vehicle manufacturer and will be based on the specific needs of the vehicle. There are three types of engine blocks that are most common within modern cars. Inline engine block, V engine block, and flat engine block. Inline engine blocks are most commonly found in smaller cars thanks to their simplicity. In this, cylinder are arranged in a single line along with the crankcase. It forms a straight line, which is why it is also known as a straight engine. These are more fuel efficient and often smoother in operation.
One of the main drawbacks of inline engine blocks is their lower performance, compared with V and flat engine blocks. V engine block. V engines have cylinders arranged in two banks at an angle to each other forming a V shape when viewed from the front. Common angles for V engines are 60, 90, or 120 degrees. Such a design allows for the engine block to be made even smaller, while continuing to provide room for more cylinders. These blocks are found more commonly on high-performance mid-range cars, thanks to their ability to produce an even greater amount of power. V engines can provide better balance and reduced vibrations compared to inline engines. Because of their clever design, V engine blocks are inherently more expensive than inline, while also being heavier. The third and final type of engine block is the flat engine block. In this, the cylinders are arranged horizontally and lie on opposite sides of the crankshaft. This allows them to have a greater weight distribution and lower center of gravity. The engine's flat profile allows for a more compact and aerodynamic design. Because of this, flat engine blocks are of a slightly smaller size than V engine blocks, and for this reason they are almost exclusively found in performance vehicles. Common engine block issues. As much as we hate to admit it, engine blocks are often prone to failure, with a few key issues cropping up every so often. Cracking. One of the most detrimental of problems with engine blocks is that they generate high levels of heat in a concentrate space. Over time, this causes the block to expand and contract, which eventually results in cracks within the metal alloys. These cracks lead to loss of air pressure and at worst leaks. Overheating. One of the main jobs of an engine block is to transfer heat away from the engine itself. If they are unable to do so, heat levels can rise and eventually lead to a loss of performance and sometimes complete engine failure. Warping. Another issue with heat dissipation revolves around material warpage. Throughout its lifetime, an engine block will endure many different climates, often in a drastic fashion. This continuous change of cold and warm can cause the materials inside to change, sometimes permanently. With such low room for error in engine blocks, any change in size can be detrimental to operation ultimately resulting in extremely hard to diagnose issues like reduced compression ratios and speed degradation. So that's it. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, then please share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel for more content like this.